Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Pierre Andriani from Autodesk. Today we're gonna do a deep dive into the Modify Crease tool. It was released in the 2023 version of Alias, but I thought it'd be a good time to revisit the tool and make sure that everyone understand what it does and how to best use it. So the Modify sub the crease enables you to control the detail of a crease. It helps you to refine an unwanted crease when it comes out with control, it fixes issues that other tools cannot. So typically when you go from a crease edge to an uncreased edge, it's very difficult to control, but this tool allows you to do so. And you can create the best geometry that's possible. There's multiple uses for modeler and designer, something we'll talk about. It does have history, so you can go back and edit. And this is a really uh, special uh, feature for Alias. It's not transferable to another software. So if you have a modified crease in Alias and transfer it out into FBX, it will not translate. Okay, now the modify crease tool. Again, I have a, just a regular sub D. And you can see here, I have a crease down the middle and uncreased edge here and uncreased edge here. So if you look in the box mode, so creasing through here, no crease there, no crease there. So if you go under modify crease and double click. The modify crease works as follows. It's gonna to try to go from a creased edge to an uncreased edge. So if you go to the middle here, it's gonna to try to go from this uncreased edge to this creased edge in a nice transition. So if I click on here, so right here you can see how I want three edges, meaning it's gonna to try to achieve that result within three edges. So it's gonna go, tr it's, again, it's not, it's attempting to go crease to uncrease in three edges. If you create it, you can go, uh, yes, there we go. You can go as much as six edges. So let's go five and see right there as the math also has changed just because I asked for more edges. So six, if you go back to from three, if you look here on this side from three and then into six, it's really trying to blend this edge from left to right. So I'll just go back to three. This is the box mode and you can see the box mode stays the same, but the surfaces are changing. So this is something also to be aware of, even though the box mode is not changing, the math underneath really is. So if I leave this five edges and then just have a look, not bad. And you can actually, obviously there's history now, so I could try to move the CVs to make this edge work. And something else to be aware of for this tool, even though the box mode looks a little odd, you have this, uh, you know, this bump here, really. You really want to pay attention is the surfaces. What happens to the surface? If the surface looks good, then the, the tool is working. So always pay attention to your surfaces and not to your uh, box mode for this tool in particular. So if I go back to uh, my Creedit, and you can see I have a nice and I could probably work a little longer to try to get this uh, to work better, but that's okay. That's not the goal. I just want to show you the tool. So make that a little better. All right. So if I create it, this edge again, I get five edges and you can see here, those, this is actually grayed out. I don't have access to these tools. However, if you say modify crease on this side now, and now I have control of this entire edge and this is ungrayed out. So if you look and gun sight this edge a little better. And if I say, all right, my sharpness is one. What if I want really sharp? Now you can see you can overachieve the sharpness down the center, or you can also make it more dull. So if I wasn't able to achieve that transition, maybe I can use the sharpness tool to make that transition look better or with less, you know, less um, angle of attack. So you can play with those tools to really modify the look of this piece. Um, right now I'm gonna over sharp again and the bias will actually bias the math to the left or to the right. And then you can get into a conversation with your designer about how you design your transition, how you design your edges just by staying in the tool. And if you look at the box mode, again, the box mode stays 
as it was before. You really want to look at how the surface behaves in the tool itself. That's something to really pay attention to. If I uh, switch examples, go to my next example. So if we have like this, maybe this, uh, let's say an old school um, uh, glove box intersection, right? Um, maybe, who knows, something of that nature. If you look at the box mode here, the box mode is actually creased all the way. There's a crease running top to bottom. If you ask for modify crease, you will see the red lines because here it says, hey, this is creased all the way. If you want this tool to work, you really shouldn't have the, at least this final edge uncreased and the same at this junction here. However, I do have access to the modify crease tool. I have, do have access to this edge. So if I look at it, and now I can really start playing with the bias, the sharpness, the angle. And I can really get into a conversation from modeler to designer saying, okay, how do you want this to look? Do you sure you want this to look neutral or should we bias it one side to the other? Should we make it dull? And you're really starting to design directly in the tool just and leaving the underneath math uh, as is. And this is, uh, I think, one of the really powerful things about this tool. You can really start modeling different scenarios, but with the same set of sub Ds. So this is, I think, the, I think this is really the power of this tool. Okay. If I go into now, let's say this exterior here, and this is where we get into the, um, really what's at stake uh, for this tool, I think, for a lot of people. The key, I mean, what I was telling you before, is really to go from a full body into a, a crease here. So if I can go here and say modify crease, and in this position here, I can, you know, I can start and try to finesse this edge because I'm creasing here. I can go from three, but I can really try and add even more edges to get this crease to work. See, it's starting to fade a little bit, so I could probably get in there and start pulling CVs, for example. And I can really start having uh, design this transition the way I like. Another example is, you know, from full to a crease and here from a crease into a full. So if I go in this way and I can say modify crease, again, I can ask how many edges I want. And again, I can start to design the way this and the way this fade works with history. So I can get in there and start playing with how the uh, the math transitions and again i can just start playing with these and playing with how many edges i need so on and so forth and probably same on this edge uh over here modify crease there well here maybe not as as much but i can really have an edge i can run this into here and run that from crease into a full body so that's the power of this tool some uh, best practices to keep in mind is the when you've creased an edge, it's always going to look for where's the other side, and you know, something you want to be aware of. So, and there are some limitations because here, for example, do I can I crease finish the crease here? And the answer is no because you would have your crossing over more than four surfaces: one, two, three, four, five. Crossing over five surfaces, so you can't really finish. Uh, at the crease in this end. Well, you cannot really do a modified crease at this end, I should say. So it's always gonna look for another another way. So here it's gonna look on this side. And here we're ending into a T and it cannot end into a T. So that's why it gives you this red function as well. So it's gonna keep looking all the way around and we know it's not gonna end here or there. And typically you could end the, you can do a, another modify crease on this end if you wanted to. So I could go in there and say modify crease. Obviously you can leave it as is, as is but just to tell you where and how uh, the tool wants to finish off from the other side. So always be aware of, if you do a modify crease on one side, just be aware of what happens on the other side. That's really the key. In this case, we're not modeling symmetrical cross cars. So I just want to pay attention as to where it ends on the other side. 
So here, for example, on this hood, you cannot do a modify crease up here because your oh, apologies, you are crossing over one, two, three, five box mode again, one, two, three, four, five. So you cannot modify crease here and then because you're crossing here across five. If I did this uh, bit here as well, I still have an issue here. I cross more than four surfaces, so I could not modify crease up here to finish here because I am crossing more than four surfaces there. On this end, however, if I say modify crease, okay, this end is acceptable because it ends here and that's fine. So again, if I modify the crease here, as I mentioned before, always pay attention to the um, the model itself, not so much the cage. If I uh, add more edges and if I really want to start playing with these again the box mode might look a little off but the key thing is to pay attention to your model so while the box mode might look a little you know a little off the result of the surfaces itself looks in this view pretty good so again, you want to pay attention to the surfaces and not um, not the box. Uh, another example would be to modify crease um, this whole piece here. If I say modify crease that, and I can say, uh, well, if I turn my model off, say, well, maybe I wanted this to be more sharp or dull. And then with a little bias, you can really have, again, a very different way of uh, looking at the surface if you want to add acceleration here or if you want to add a little return there you can really have a different a very different look and you can just have a conversation with your designer but just by staying in the tool and again this is how powerful this specific tool is so that's modified crease thank you everyone for watching my video and we'll catch you next time